Welcome back. It's 6.51. Time for your morning news now. A Sparta man is sentenced to 53 years for beating his girlfriend to death. 34-year-old Sean Hawk is convicted of killing 32-year-old Sarah Latimer in May 2022. He's been sentenced to 33 years, confined, and another 20 under extended supervision. He initially faced a first-degree intentional homicide charge, but then pleaded guilty to a charge of first-degree reckless homicide. Trust me when I say I truly despise the man I was when I was arrested. Anybody who looks at this case would not think that's a man I love that woman. Mom, too. I love Sarah Lockwood. Maybe someday you will have a relationship with your son. Because you are the only parent he has right now. We can't be his parents. Where's grandparent? Doesn't have a mom. And if you want to call yourself a dad, you're going to have to earn that. After the sentencing, Latimer's mother said it's important to finally have closure, but the law did not do enough to protect her daughter. All the cases that they went through for the domestic violence um, and her beating, her, him beating her up, they only, um, they only gave him probation at the end. And in April of 22, he got put on probation. In May of 22, he killed her. So if he would have gone to jail and not probation, she'd still be alive right now. The 20 years of extended supervision is the maximum the state can enact. The City of La Crosse Committee is recommending a plan to redevelop the South Community Library into housing. The Economic and Community Development Commission reviewed three proposals last night. They're backing a scaled down version of Willow Grove LLC's plan, which would convert the existing library building into six housing units and add two townhouses. Willow is offering about 350 grand for the property, but requesting a $200,000 credit for water and sewer work. The Common Council will have the final say on the sale when they meet July 11th. Tonight, President Biden and former President Trump set to face off in the first debate of the 2024 presidential campaign season. The 90-minute debate from Atlanta is likely to focus on hot-button issues like immigration, the economy, abortion, and the wars in Ukraine and Gaza. Both candidates have agreed microphones will be muted when it's not their turn to speak, and there'll be no in-studio audience. Minnesota health officials say nitrate contamination is all too common in Winona, Houston, and Fillmore County groundwater. The chemical compound is linked to serious health risks. One of the easiest ways it gets into groundwater is manure runoff from farms. A new proposal would restrict certain farming practices to lower Minnesota's nitrate levels. It would first require cover crops be planted during the fall. Farmers will also have to inspect their fields while manure is being applied at the end of every workday. We think that they're very common sense. They're very reasonable. They're a small incremental step towards what needs to be done. Yeah. And so this, this is what we would like to see for a first step. And we think that things need to go a lot farther. If the proposal is approved, the MCPA says the changes would go into effect in 2028. Today's clue for the Riverfest medallion has been revealed. It says, Quote, Hip Hip Hooray, Riverfest 2024 is almost underway. Soon the park will resemble a circus with food, family, and fun. Come down and join us. The medallion is hidden within a 10-mile radius of Riverside Park. It's small enough to fit in the palm of your hand and won't be buried. The winner gets four Riverfest buttons, $50 in food vouchers, and 10 beverage tickets. All right, and away we go. We're looking at a nice day, a little bit cooler. 78 degrees expected with partly cloudy skies and maybe an increase in clouds once we get deeper into the evening hours and maybe a spotty shower or two that would be quite light. Tomorrow, well, rainfall is on the way. It'll pack it in as we get into the afternoon and evening hours, possibly a little bit later with maybe a storm or two. How about this, though? Saturday and Sunday looking pretty good temperature-wise and getting cooler on Sunday, as you notice, 75 degrees uh, after an 81 degree for Saturday. We get into Monday, we've got some showers turning into storms on Tuesday, a nice break, and then more showers coming back again for the 4th of July. Back to you. All right, and speaking of the 4th of July, competitive eater Joey Chestnut will celebrate the nation's birthday by doing what he does best, eating hot dogs, but it won't be in New York this year. Instead, the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Champion and world record holder will be competing against some soldiers at Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas. It'll be part of the Army base's annual Pop Goes the Fort Independence Day celebration. In accepting the invite, Chestnut wrote on social media, quote, bring me your best four eaters and I'll take them down from the <laughs> I'm sure he will. 
Oh my hardest. gosh, how many hot dogs do you think you could eat? Oh, me? I yeah. can do about eight or nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. maybe we'll have a hot dog eating contest. Awesome. Oh, great. Here we go. <laughs> You'll win, I think. Start working out. Yeah, thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Coming up, or sorry, we'll see you back here at noon. Until then, I've got hot dogs on the mind. I, I bet you do. So do <laughs> we will see you back here then. Enjoy your day.